Hi everyone and welcome back to the next diecast. For today's video I'll be showing you and reviewing this 118 again 1996 Dodge Viper GTS Indianapolis 500 pace car edition made by Maisto. This is actually a limited edition model made by Maisto. I have the box back here for it. Um, you can see Dodge Viper GTS on there, Indianapolis 500 pace car. Um, it has the Indianapolis 500 official pace car stickers on it as well. Um, the 1996 um, race for the um, Indy 500, they actually used the Viper as, as the pace car, um, as, as you can see here. And Maisto re released the model of this shortly before I think the race actually took place in May of that year. I found this for only $8 at this like random um, like antique thrift store kind of place. I'd say it was an excellent buy for $8 of all things because it's kind of a rarish model now um, and it's limited edition as well so I'd say that was definitely like a steal for that price. Maisto also makes the regular 1996 Viper of course or they used um, to make it at least. It came in a variety of colors. They also made a 1997 version that just came in like a few solid colors. Barago also makes the 96 Viper GTS but it's not very good like the whole entire dashboard is like a sticker it kind of looks bad. Um, and the Maisto version is actually very good for um, in terms of detail and everything like that. And Maestro does still make the 1998 Viper GT2, which is basically the same thing as this. It has different wheels, of course, and it has a spoiler back here. And the side intakes are a bit different. So that this review could kind of be used for that a, a little bit. Just keep in mind like the differences that are between the, the two models. Let's go ahead and get into the details here. We'll start up here with the front of the model. Nice looking headlights. There's no pegs to be seen. The gap is a bit bad though, you can see right there, uh, but the bulbs look nice. They're done in like a separate chrome piece. Same thing with this light here. The fog lights are actually separate plastic pieces and so are the turn signals. None of them are painted on. And a lot of Meister's newer vehicles, they just paint those lights on, but on this one, they're actually separate pieces and they look really good. They look very um, good, especially from a distance too. This badge right here is just a sticker and it's not really put on that well, but um, it does have the Indy 500 like bird or whatever that logo is underneath it, just like the real, um, pace car had so that looks good at least paint quality overall does look very good um, this metallic blue was available on the real viper and it was the same and of course on the pace car that's the color that was used and this bumper is actually plastic but you really can't tell because the metallic is nicely done on both um, components here there's a red version of this car that Maisto made it's just like a solid red like fire engine red color and that doesn't look as good because the bumper looks obviously darker than like the metal portion um, uh, of the car so it's not that great but for like the metallic paint jobs on this model that Maisto made they look better between the metal and plastic um, which is nice to see. The stripes are painted on they're not stickers uh, a little bit uneven in some spots but it's not a, a big deal. The, um, the, this grill here is entirely functional you can see into the engine same thing with this hood scoop up here and even these vents are done nicely too you can see into like the wheel wells there um, which is very cool. These are on the real car. I'm not sure what they are, like intakes or anything like that, but Meister did a nice job with like the textured pattern on them. Windshield is a tad bit loose a little bit, but it's not gonna pull off unless you actually like force it off. The mirrors are made of metal, which is surprising. Meister usually doesn't do that. So these won't break off ever because they're made of metal and they're molded into the doors, which is a very nice touch. On the side, you have the official pace car inscription, 50th Indianapolis. 500, May 26, 1996. I'm sorry, that says, I think 80th or 90th, not really sure, but that is a sticker. Um, so just be careful when you clean the model because it might come off. And there is a little American flag above right there. This Viper GTS badge is actually part of the metalwork and it pops out and it looks very nice. Um, it's, not like a, it's not like, you know, just a sticker or anything like that. And it looks very good. Indianapolis 500 badge right there. That looks great. Wheels, Meister did a really good job with. They look just like the wheels on the real car. There are no disc brakes or calipers to be seen, which is a bit um, disappointing, but the tires are actually Goodyear tires. Meister doesn't do like branded tires anymore, but on this one it does have branded tires, so that's really cool to see. Back here, the bumper is also plastic, but you can't really tell because like the metallic paint is nicely done in that area. Dodge Viper, that's done in like kind of raised up plastic as you see there. Lights, taillights and turn signals look great. They're separate pieces, then they're not painted on. They just look great. Kind of rough back here with the paint on the stripes, but that's not really a big deal. 
I like this badge back here. It's done actually in red, so it matches like the taillights a little bit. And that same little bird logo is back there as well. The exhaust pipes are a little bit uneven, like this one's lower than the other one, but they still look pretty good. They're done nicely in, in that chrome and everything. Gas cap looks a bit cheap looking, but at least it's there. It, it is a separate piece and it's not loose or anything like that. So um, that's a nice touch. Full suspension, actually excellent suspension, I might add, and steering, of course, as well, as most Meistens have. And this car just looks great on every angle, especially with like the box in the background too. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just hold it there for a second. So opening features, let's get into that here. This rear glass opens, which is which kind of serves as like the trunk. Full-size spare tire back here, rubber tire, and the full-size wheel with the Goodyear inscription on it. Nice texture back here in this like little um, luggage space there. Um, this doesn't come out or anything, but it looks pretty good, especially with like this cover open or, or closed. Plastic hinges, so this will, over time, not be able to open anymore. So I try to open it as little as possible because I want to kind of like preserve this model in particular. The hood does open too, and it is locked shut, so you just kind of got to pull it up some like that. Bit of a chore. There you go. Very, heavy, very like heavy looking hood. Detailing on the engine is actually pretty good. Um, you see the main engine block there. It says Viper on it, and then that's done in red. That's a separate piece. All this piping and wiring. All the wiring is like a spider web going across the engine, and it looks and it look, looks pretty cool. Musto usually doesn't make that much effort on their cars anymore. Some newer versions might not have this extra gray wiring, so just keep, keep that in mind. Um, but it's really good that they just didn't do one plastic piece in here. Very well done. Like, like the Viper badge on either side there. Underspray is awful. <laughs> you can see that when they sprayed the hood that, that it got into like the wheel wells here. Now, on the, on the Viper GT2 version of this car that Maisto made, these are going to be fully painted. So if you were to buy Maestu's Viper GT2 that they make either in yellow or white um, today, they're going to be fully painted. They're not going to look really bad like, like, like this one does. And this is a model from the 90s. Maestu didn't really do like fully painted undersides of their hoods yet. So it's not that bad. And if you look at it from here, you can't really see the underspray that much. But it's kind of almost hilarious how, like, how it looks with like the paint for, from the vents going into there. Um, but that really doesn't detract too much, I would say, from this generous detail on the engine, as you can see here. You can even see through the main block there. There's, like, wiring and stuff down below there. It's actually very good. And the hood does lock shut, as you can see there. kind of clicks. Doors open. A tad bit loose, so just be careful with these hinges because they are spring-loaded as well. So over, over time, they might weaken. Nicely detailed door panels. I like the black and white two-tone going on there. They have like a leather pattern on them too. See on both sides there. Very nice looking seats. The seats look excellent. They have kind of like a wrinkle effect to them and they look and feel like the real leather. They just look great in this white too. And even the racing harnesses are well done. They do fold a little bit, but not really that much. They just look, most of it nailed these seats. They just look ex excellent. The flooring, Maisto actually added molded floor mats, so they look like they're real floor mats. They look really good. And the floor actually has a rough texture to it too, almost like carpeting. So they really paid good attention to this interior, as, as you can tell. It just looks great. I wish they still made the, the 96 model Viper, because um, it looks really good. Separate pieces for the shifter and for the parking brake, as you can see there. Buttons on the center console are detailed like just excellent. They look really good. All the HVAC controls are painted on, all the vents, all the gauges are separate circles and separate stickers. They just look great. The dashboard has kind of a nice like leather pattern to it. It just looks excellent. And the Brago, they just have a big giant sticker right there. Maisto made the effort and did separate buttons and pieces and everything like that. It just looks great. Moving along to this side. Steering wheel, not much to say. It just has like the Viper logo molded in the center. But the steering wheel on the real Viper isn't really that detailed um, in the first place, so it's not that big of a deal. The seats just look up, just look great. The pedals are very hard to see. They're just done in black. Um, they do look okay, though. Um, same thing over here. There's a floor mat down there, and there's some nice rough texture in to simulate the carpet look. Doors are a bit loose. That's, not, that's kind of disappointing, so just be careful with, it, with those doors. Uh, undercarriage detail. You can see most of the engine, which is very cool, and even the steering system too, you can see that work when you turn the wheels. Um, there's some of the engine down there, and there's some of the detailing above 
that portion there. Exhaust looks pretty good. This actually continues all the way through into the engine. Looks very good. Uh, even the suspension you can actually see as well. Overall, if you can find the pace car version of this model, I would definitely get it because it looks really cool and it is kind of hard to find. And it's kind of a nice like you know piece to have to your collection. Maestro makes made this Viper just in the regular blue and white without the pace car decals on it. If you can find that, then by all means get it. These are all over eBay and other auction sites, and you know Maestro still makes the makes the GT2 version of this car, so it's very easy to find. And if you're into like 90 supercars or just supercars in general. Um, this would look good in any collection, I would say, of 118 CL cars. I hope this helps, and as always, thank you all so much for, for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel, um, and also follow my Instagram page, Nick's Diecast page, which is all lowercase and no spacing. Thanks for watching.